stories of alleged IRS harassment they endured, detailing the invasive questioning and long delays they were subject to after applying for tax-exempt status. But when Congressman Jim McDermott of Washington State got his turn, he challenged some of those accounts and their motives. None of your organizations were kept from organizing or silenced. If you didn't come in and ask for this tax break, you would have never had a question asked of you. And I get the feeling that many of you and my Republican colleagues just don't believe or you believe you should be free from political targeting, but that you should be from free from any scrutiny at all. Joining me now, Washington Democratic Congressman Jim McDermott. Congressman, thank you for coming on. Uh, so we watched that with great interest yesterday and had a discussion about it and they questioned whether you were blaming the victim, as Paul Ryan suggested moments after you concluded your remarks. Do you understand that criticism? Yeah, anybody who would make that criticism didn't listen to my whole speech. I spent uh, five minutes talking and you're talking about one line. The fact was I said five times that the questions that they were asked were egregious, they were out of bounds, they shouldn't have been asked, and I said that over and over again very clearly. But what I was trying to do was to say this process of asking for a tax exemption is one that once you ask for one, you open yourself up to being questioned. And I think that we want the questions to be on both sides. The only group that lost that was told they couldn't have an exemption was a liberal group yeah, but called it's, Merge but, America. But you know that many, many conservative groups, hundreds of them, were kept waiting with no answers for months and months they, and actually they, years but at they a time. Were never, they were de never denied but, their but why exemption. Is that, what, what is, who cares? Who cares? If, well, you're, if you're stuck for three years well, with no answer, isn't that the same as an effective operate. denial? Wait a minute. Ms. Kelly. They can still operate. They can still collect money. They can still put out advertisements. They can use their First Amendment rights. Nobody at the IRS stopped them from doing that. But Congressman McDermott, was, that ignores the reality of the testimony you heard. Jim Kukugi talked about how they lost a $30,000 donation because a lot of people don't want to donate to groups that haven't received that stamp of approval in officially becoming a 501c4. That was not under testimony, under oath. I don't know. He, so you has no, he didn't offer any proof. He didn't offer any proof. So he was, he he was lying? Is this your answer to that? No, that they, anybody no, who claims no. that they no, lost donations, are, they're Ms. misleading? Kelly, you are putting words in my mouth. I'm, no, I'm Stop asking that. you. I'm asking you. You. Are, you are putting words in my mouth. Stop it. Uh, I'm not, sir. I I'm asking you whether you are I rejecting said, that testimonial as not true. I am saying people can say anything, and they do say in testimony before committees. But the fact is that we don't know that to be true. If you would bring some evidence in and show it to us, we would be glad to see that. That somebody said, I offered you $30,000, and because you don't have a tax-exempt status, I'm not going to give it to you. If he had a letter or something like that, then we would have something to talk about. But when you're just listening to people tell you stuff, people tell us in the Congress things all the time. And the... And the IRS hears people say all the time, and they ask more questions and ask for documentation. That's the nature. This is not an honor system for giving tax exemptions. We don't, we make people, and when Merge America, a progressive organization who is training Democratic women to run for office, when they ask, the IRS asked them for questions, and they said, no, that's political. That's the way it so, should so be. So once again, so it was the groups, so these women and men, we've got a full screen of some of the witnesses who came before you yesterday. Uh, it was their obligation. It, it was Sue Martinic of the, uh, the Right to Life group in Iowa. She, she should have said, this is inappropriate. I understand the system, and I can tell you, I know that these are not appropriate questions when you tell me that I have to guarantee you I won't picket or protest outside of Planned Parenthood. I mean, you... Uh, once again, as we saw you do yesterday, seem to be putting the burden on honest American citizens who are no, applying for C no, 501c4 not. status, and that, that's, they have no, th th there's nothing wrong with them doing that. You're wrong. I am not putting the burden on them. I'm explaining the process. If you ask for a tax exemption, you have to be prepared to justify it. Right. Now, 
I think we I agree said on that. I think half even a your dozen witnesses agree Wait a minute. I said a half a dozen times that the justification that was asked for in these instances was wrong. And I'm on the side of those six people sitting in front of us. Really? I absolutely think, yes. I absolutely let me, agree because let me ask you this. I, I, got, I, w- I want to get to I want to get to this portion of your remarks, which yes, you sure. seem to be putting the burden again on the on the good Americans, honest Americans who were before you just telling their stories when you said the following here. I haven't heard a single word here about what questions you think we ought to be able to ask you about your tax exempt requests. Anything else like the circus that's happening in the oversight committee or here is simply political theater. Why is it their obligation to come before the House Ways and Means Committee after a flight from Iowa and three years of trying to deal with the harassing IRS to try to educate you, sir, or the IRS on exactly what questions are appropriate and which ones are not? That was a rhetorical question to the committee and the chairman. Why are we having these people who told us their story, we got it out of the way. Now let's get on to how we fix it. The real question is, how do you fix this? Because it's going to continue to happen if you don't fix it. And there, there's no, there was not anything said in the whole hearing up to the time I was there. In fact, I stayed till the very end, and there was never anybody talking about how do we fix it. I understand that, and sir. But you did not is, phrase it as well, a rhetorical question to the Republicans. You well, said, I didn't say, you said I haven't I'm heard a single word here about what questions you think if you, you think we ought to be able to ask question, you about you your tax-exempt request. The Republicans weren't making tax-exempt requests. It was the people before you. So it certainly sounded like a direct question to the good men and women who took time out of their day after being harassed by our IRS to speak That's to you, how sir. You heard it. That but is, and you're right. And we'll leave it to the viewers to decide. Thank you for being on, sir. We've got to go. My great All pleasure. the best to you. See you again. Bye bye.